Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello and welcome back. Today we're with Michelle Fabriker, our love and relationship coach, and my favorite partner, John Coleman. <laughs> thanks, Art. Michelle, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good to be here with you both. Uh, you know, to, speaking of relationships, uh, the, the most important relationship that comes to my mind is marriage. I've been to a lot of weddings over the years, and at every single wedding, my own included, um, it seems to me that the bride and groom enter into this, whether they say it out loud, which they often do, um, they enter into it with the idea that they're going to make the other person happy, or the other person's going to make me happy, you know, whichever way you look at it. Um, or both. <laughs> or both, yeah. Mm. And it seems to me, having been through 50 years of marriage, <laughs> that's not necessarily the way it is, is it? Right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, I is think that, that... really Is that really our job, to make the other person happy? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I mean, the simple answer is no. And, um, and yet, unfortunately, we often have the expectation that we have to do this for our partner or they have to do it for us. And it's really, it's burdensome and it's not helpful for either person to think that that's your job. And, you know, as we all know, being happy is kind of an inside job. <laughs> we have to take care of that ourselves. Yeah. But on the other hand, it is our job not to make our partner unhappy. <laughs> that's the way I see it. Yes and no. I mean, I think that we, we've touched on this in other episodes, but... Sometimes, you know, we have to assert a boundary for ourselves about something that works for us or doesn't work for us, um, depending on what our partner wants to do or, you know, how they're conducting themselves or whatever. And, and we might say something or do something they don't, that they don't like. And that's not a reason to not assert what we need for ourselves and to honor what's true for us. So, so I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if that's – we will sometimes make our partner unhappy. We will sometimes – you know, in what we choose for ourselves, there will be some, you know, impact on them and mm -hmm. vice versa. And that's, that's the way, that's just the, the way it goes. You know, I, I, it's, it seems to me, uh, I haven't really thought about this that much before, but now that uh, the subject has been broached, is that to me, happiness is a personal state of mind. Uh, there are some people who can be happy in, uh, what may be considered to be difficult circumstances because they're looking at it in a certain way. Uh, so I think a lot of it has to do with how you react to something that somebody has said or to your environment mm -hmm. and that making yourself content with or accepting of that determines whether you are happy or not. And probably also the same is true of your partner. So uh, uh, being maybe being uh, not not being responsible for the other person's happiness, but being responsible for sensing if the other person is happy or unhappy might help you react in a way to help them through it. Uh, right. It doesn't sound that profound and, and, and well thought out, but I think it's our own state of mind. And if we can be happy, the likelihood is that the people around us are going to be happy. Yeah. yeah. Happiness is contagious, as I uh, wrote uh, somebody I saw on a billboard somewhere. But, you know, it is a complicated situation. Mm. Yeah, because obviously. When, when yeah. you partner with somebody, your your happiness is entwined. Yeah, I mean, you're really linking, you're linking your wagon to someone yes. else in some way, whatever you want to call it. I mean, but the, but the truth is, the bottom line is that we're not responsible for our partner's feelings or thoughts or even, you know, choices in life, right? I mean, we have an influence, we have an impact, but it's really important to kind of see it as, you know, we're separate people who are coming together to enjoy being together because we like being together. But, um, you know, one of the quotes I found about this is that um, this therapist talks about being a, it being a profound collapse of boundaries when couples are continuously trying to make each other happy at the expense of themselves. Mm -hmm. So it just, I think that there's some way that if we, if we think we have to do so much for our partner, it's way too much. And we need to 
focus more on, you know, back where we actually have an influence, which is more in ourselves and yeah. impact and, and help. You know, I'm not saying we don't just, ha, 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 you're over there suffering. You know, obviously we're not going to do that, but we're going to be there and listen and be supportive. But we really can't solve or really fix fix their problems for them. Yeah. Well, that that, of course, is the complication of all relationships. Right? I mean... Did you say old relationships all, or all, old relationships? All, all relationships. Yes. Old or young. <laughs> right. Old, young, and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so we, we actually uh, got to a, a bottom line real quick on this, is that we're not responsible for, we can influence it, but we're not responsible uh, for somebody else's happiness, uh, although we can help set a mood for it and be understanding uh, and reactive and uh, understand when they're not happy. But uh, we need to we need to get our own act in order and know what makes us happy. And then we're in a position to be open enough to uh, uh, help somebody else uh, find their happiness. Yeah, yeah. But there's a little more I want to say about that because it can be difficult. OK, obviously, if your partner is going through a hard time at work or or they're looking for a job and, you know, whatever. There are times when it's a challenge to not be overly focused on them and kind of let some of your own things go and, and what's going on over there. Sometimes it can be kind of a burden for them to see you coming around all the time. It's kind of, you know, do we want some friend meddling in our life all the time? Well, probably not. We want our partner always in our business. And so it's and not to say that we, we you know, we, we communicate, right? That's the, the main thing is, to talk together, decide, you know, ask, can, is there any way I can help you today? Or, you know, if they want some time alone, give them to that, give them that space, right? Or if they need support from other people, maybe other friends or even seeking, you know, counseling or whatever on their own. It's like that can be, you know, it's not like, oh, why aren't they coming to me for it? Maybe you're not the person that they want to come to for it. And it doesn't mean anything's wrong with your relationship necessarily. It just means there's an, a, there's two autonomous people in a healthy relationship. There's two autonomous people attending to themselves. And like I said, you know, choosing to come together and, um, um, but it's really important to make sure you're staying, you know, keeping your own thing going. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's, uh, 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 I didn't have time to research this before, but, but John is, who's our, our musical, uh, uh reference point, uh, maybe can help me on this, but there's a, to me, a Hawaiian sounding song that has uh, of the phrase in it. So be happy. <laughs> OK, and that's that's really I think the point is uh, no matter what else is hap happening around you, uh, just uh, make yourself happy. If you make yourself happy, then other things around you will be happy. Uh, I'm going to have to go take a look for that and maybe we'll put it in the, in the notes and uh, I'll link to the song. Don't worry. Yeah. 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 And of course, you know, the, the caveat, of course, is if your partner is, you know, an illness, some crisis, obviously you're going to be putting your life on hold for a bit to attend to, you know, to each other, hopefully. But I'm sure. talking about on some ongoing thing. You really need to make sure it's like, am I trying to lean over too much or do I need to stay in my own lane here a little more? So I just want to bring that yeah. in. So, I, Michelle, I think... you're not really saying that your overall advice is that whether or not you're happy is not my problem. OK, you don't want to sort of take that attitude. OK, uh, but the attitude is uh, it's really not our responsibility, uh, uh, even though we may want to help contribute to their happiness. But we need to make sure that we're happy first, not to the exclusion of other people's happiness. Uh, and I think that's an important distinction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can kind of what comes to my mind is we can care without caretaking. That's, that's good because it is all about finding that balance. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so be happy. Don't worry. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.